Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Contagion. My name is John Parkinson, and I'm the senior editor. Joining us today is Dr. Jonathan Javid, who is founder and CEO of NeuroRx. Thank you, doctor, for being able to join us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. For those not familiar with the recent findings of RLF100 related to COVID-19 treatment, can you provide an overview of it? Sure. Uh, so the, the drug we're talking about is actually a, a naturally occurring peptide in the body, just like insulin is a naturally occurring peptide. Insulin regulates blood sugar. Uh, this peptide, uh, basoactive intestinal peptide, is actually the major protector of cells in the lung and very specialized cells in the lung. Fewer than 5% of the cells in the lung are these specialized alveolar two cells. But those are the cells that enable the lung to transmit oxygen to the blood. And without them, the lung is impermeable to oxygen. All of a sudden people come in, they call them happy hypoxics with COVID because they don't look that sick. They don't have flu symptoms but yet they can't stand up without falling down on the floor because there's no oxygen in their blood. And all of that's happening because the COVID virus has knocked out those cells. This peptide, and we call it abiptodil, which is simply a fancy name for synthetically made vasoactive intestinal peptide. This peptide protects those cells. And we now know that it blocks the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID, from replicating inside those cells and killing those cells. Very good. And Brazilian investigators reported a case control study showing patients who survived while on ventilators for COVID-19 had significantly greater VIP count in their blood than those who died from respiratory failure. Can you explain why this is significant? But you know, as we said, this VIP is the natural protector of the lung. It was discovered in 1970. There are probably more than 500 papers on the topic. And this peptide is the reason human beings can inhale smoke and live to tell about it. It's the reason human beings occasionally inhale stomach contents and live to tell about it. This 28 amino acid peptide protects the lung against all sorts of injuries. So uh, the hypothesis that the Brazilians had is maybe the people who die of COVID, unlike all the people who get infected by the virus, maybe the people who die of COVID have, have lower levels of this peptide in their blood than people who don't. And that's exactly what they showed. They showed that when they looked at 25 people who had COVID-19 who were on ventilators, the 13 who died had much less VIP in their blood than the 12 who lived. Absolutely. And one of the areas that's exciting is the idea of potentially reducing ventilator use in these patients. Can you explain why this might be a reality? Well, people are on ventilation, whether it's with a ventilator, whether it's non-invasive ventilation, whether it's high nasal oxygen, because they can't oxygenate their blood. So we have to do it for them. And if this peptide protects the cells in the lung that enable the lung to oxygenate, protects the cells in the lung that enable the lung to make surfactant. And you know, that's a long word, it's a complicated word, but basically, the inside of the lung is covered by a thin film of liquid called surfactant. If that film's not there, the oxygen can't go across from the air spaces into the bloodstream. The lung becomes impermeable. And this peptide upregulates the production of surfactant, enables the lung to transmit oxygen to the blood. So if, if people are able to oxygenate again, there's no reason for them to be on a ventilator. Very good. And your company recently received a fast track designation from the FDA. What are your next steps in the process? Well, the most important thing 
is to prove that a drug is safe and effective. We've proven safety in four species of animals, and FDA has told us in writing that we've proven that to their satisfaction. When our independent data monitoring board looked at the first 30 patients in our clinical trial, they concluded that they saw no sign of a safety risk associated with our drug. Of course, they'll continue to monitor for safety. And now our challenge is to prove that the drug is effective, that people who take the drug are less likely to have respiratory failure than people who get the placebo. And that's what we're doing right now. We've enrolled 75 people in a randomized control trial where people with critical COVID-19 with respiratory failure either get our drug or placebo. We have uh, another 25 people to enroll before the data monitoring committee is ready to look at the data again. Uh, and that's our mission.